How you doing? I'm Matt Walden and we're here with Mishimoto and our donor vehicle, a 99 Ford F-250. Today we're going to be installing the Mishimoto intercooler. This guy is packed with features, fully polished. It's going to reduce your intake temperatures, increase power all around, and whether you're towing, racing, whatever you're doing with the truck, this is the intercooler that you want to have in the front end of that vehicle. The tools that you're going to need to install this intercooler are a pair of pliers, probably two sets would be a good idea, 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 11 millimeter socket, and a 13 millimeter socket. 11 millimeter ratchet wrench will also aid in removing the intercooler couplers, as well as an extension, ratchet, and this guy, which is a coolant funnel. As far as the difficulty goes, you're looking about a three on a five. All right, first things first, before we get started with any kind of taking apart, draining of fluids, you wanna make sure the truck is cool and you wanna remove both of the negative battery terminals. You're gonna use a half inch socket on these guys. Don't forget to do them both or we may be reading about you on the front page of the paper. ready to rock and roll with the rest of this. First thing first, you got to get rid of the jack tools, which make their home right on top of the radiator. After you've got the jack tools out of the way, take your eight millimeter socket. We're going to use air just in, that, in essence to save, save a little bit of time here. Put it on these guys right in here. And the radiator upper brackets also, same thing, eight millimeters. We're going to call this guy Sneaky Pete because you got to lift this up get under here for this one. So you got those guys out of the way, the upper bracket should come off in one piece. All right, next step is to remove the rest of the coolant reservoir over here. It's already loosened up because we removed the bolts for it for the upper radiator stay. There's two more guys right down here. After you got this guy completely loose, you can take off this upper coolant hose on this. This goes to the top of the radiator. After you get the lower hoses disconnected, pull this coolant reservoir straight up. And this is the hose that connects onto the bottom of the radiator that you just un undid from downstairs. Next step is take the hose clamp off of the upper radiator hose. That is also eight millimeter. Along with the upper fan shroud on this guy. Once everything's loose, you should be able to move this fan shroud around a little bit. And it sits in two bottom pegs, which I'll show you in a minute on the radiator. Once that's out of those bottom pegs, you should be able to lift this radiator right out of the truck. Once the radiator is out of the way, we're ready to get down to business on this intercooler. First, you need to get this fan shroud out of here because this is going to do nothing but clog up the situation in here. On the mounting points for the intercooler, we have one here, one here, and the other connections to this guy are the actual intercooler pipes themselves. You're going to be on a 10 millimeter up here. Right after you take the mounting points off, you can take the intercooler piping off of the intercooler itself. This guy is a little bit deeper here, so we're going to put an 11 millimeter ratchet wrench on here and just loosen this clamp up so we can get this intercooler pipe off here. Slide the clamps out of the way a little bit here. And this one's going to come out just the same, exact same as the radiator. It sits in little pegs on the bottom there and just lift it up a little bit. All right, besides the beautiful polish on the Mishimoto intercooler, you can see the differences right off the bat just between the cores, the thicknesses, the quality of the materials. And after all, you know, if you were looking to roll coal and really get this truck moving, this is the one you want in there. This guy comes with a lifetime warranty, meaning no matter what you do to this thing, if you put a hole in it, Mishimoto will replace it. All right, now in prepping for the installation of the Mishimoto intercooler, what you want to do is take the rubber grommets out of the OE one and stick them right into the Mishimoto intercooler here. All right, we're ready to drop this intercooler in. What you want to do is make sure that the lower mounting pegs sit right up in this guy, just like the OEM style, and get it down in there. It's easier to lower it on the driver's side and then snake it down past the AC lines and get it set right in there. So this guy fits like that. Once you're ready to go with that, we'll put the mounting screws in it and hook up the hoses.
Nose clamp, this guy's gotta go back on. Slide that right on the inner cooler first. Then slide your connector right over the end of that guy. Make sure it's a little bit on the loose side. And get your hose clamp. There's a little indentations on this connector to tell you right where this hose clamp goes. Make sure these intercooler clamps are tight because all that spells is a loss of power if you're losing boost. Now that the intercooler's installed, time to slide the fan shroud back in here because we are not getting this back in with the radiator in place. Ready to slide this guy right down in here. And when you're putting it down in here, make sure you get it in the bottom pegs down below. If you have to climb underneath to check it out, make sure you do so. You definitely want that to sit in the right place. And then reusing the OEM screws that came out of the original radiator, you want to put these guys back in here. After you get that fan shroud bolted up, we're ready to reattach the upper radiator hose to this guy. And make sure you tighten down the clamps. This is going to go from the top of the radiator to the overflow tank. Now that the radiator's sitting in place where it should be, we're going to go ahead and put the end brackets back on and make sure all your holes line up with the factory mounting points. Don't forget about Sneaky Pete under there. Make sure you get this screw back in here and two down here that we took out earlier. All right, now that we've wrapped pretty much everything up up top here, let's go underneath, button up the lower hoses, and we're almost ready to go. Time to fit the spare tire tools back in here. You don't want to get stranded. If you get a flat tire, you're going to be sorry you didn't put this back in here if you don't do it now. Now that we got everything buttoned up, we're ready to attach the negative battery terminals back on the batteries. some coolant up, get her going. Well, since this truck takes almost five gallons of coolant, we're gonna start off by dumping two of antifreeze in it. Top it off with a little bit of water here. Make sure you use that 50-50 mix. You really want, ideally you want 50% antifreeze, 50% water. All right, after you have the radiator installed, fill back up, start the vehicle, turn the heat on high. You wanna monitor the water level in coolant overflow bottle, as well as also monitoring the coolant temperature gauge on the dash. Take the vehicle on a road test, and you're all finished up with it. Enjoy your new Mishimoto products.